What's shaking? Hey, I'm Rick Jordan. Today, we're going all in. There we go. <laughs> hey, How we doing? What's shaking, man? How you doing? How you doing, brother? Good. Good. How's Thank life? Thank you for having Yeah, thanks Amazing. for being on. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, man. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Good. It's good. a it's a batching day. I appreciate you being part of it, dude. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm excited. Yeah, we'll have a good time for sure. Cool. Cool. I love what you got going on in the background there. That's oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I got all <laughs> yeah. little studio here. Yeah, right on. I can see that. Looks like that's where you do your show, yeah? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel yeah. and I try to get here. I usually work from home. I travel a lot. So either home, I try to, I'm trying to get in here more often and do my videos here because it's so professional, but yeah. I usually do it from my iPhone or my home, dude. To be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always all over the place. <laughs> I think one of my favorites was I was, uh, I was by the, it was at the JW Marriott in Orlando. And uh, I was at the, I, I went like down this escalator to this part to where it's like where the staff comes into the service elevators, you know, because it was yeah. the quietest area except for when they would come in. So I was, I was like hitting mute. I think I was doing on Zoom. I was like hitting mute every time the door would slam when somebody would come in. Oh, so I, was, funny, I was trying to time the questions right so I could mute it before someone else. Yeah. It was, it was hilarious, but that's what we do, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a wild world. It's been yeah. since 2000, the pandemic changed our whole business model. We yeah. have a, so I'm inside, we have a corporate office. So we have like a conference room we have a gym meditation nice. room, and we had, we got shut down during covid and it pissed me off so much i'm like we lost like 70 percent of revenue so we went completely online yeah. and the rest is history man so we now we it took us worldwide with like the actual so pandemic cool. worked out for us so it was like holy yeah. shit i got so pissed off i was like screw these people <laughs> yeah, <that's good>. <laughs> <laughs> so then we just took our content tiktok is what's blew us up man that's awesome dude believe it or not man my daughter got us on tiktok and it was like Holy shit, we went completely. I mean, we had been posting, we posted, we posted 35,000 times by 2020 without any virality. And in, in wow. one video, man, hit on TikTok and it was like, <laughs> wow, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, I think we already started the show. No, no official intro or anything like that. But <laughs> we are already yeah. recording. That's, that's good well, info. But um, cool. uh, for everyone listening now, this is a good way to start. This I love it when this happens because it's like we we meet and then it's like, man, this is a just it, it's kindred spirits right away. Yeah. You know, yes, yes. it's awesome, brother. But we'll dive into that too because I mean, it's I mean, John Vasquez, Coach JV. Yeah, you know, that's yes. who that's who we've got here today. And yeah. th this is I mean, your bio is amazing, dude. It's uh. You know, you. You, you wrote a book in 2006, right? The book called The Secret. No, you didn't. You woke up and read that. I wish I wrote The Secret. Yeah, no kidding. I'm like, wait a second. That's not, I know that book. You know, that's a, <laughs> it's over my shoulder right here. Yeah, yeah I see it up there now. That's awesome. Yeah, but after an attempted suicide, dude, what, what led up to that? Yeah, it was uh, interesting. Yeah, it goes pretty deep. It started, you know, uh, as I realized through the awakening afterwards what what caused it right i was kind of just obliviously going through life and um it was just trauma as a child right i never yeah. really had the healed trauma and then my whole young adult life after i went out of the military i was just seeking edification from the world i just didn't know i didn't know how to operate in the world i really didn't have a lot of um uh, masculine guidance within my life my dad was in yeah. my life but wasn't i mean he was a, he was worked nonstop constantly you know he, he provided as a father but or provided for the family, but wasn't truly there to teach me how to be a man. And so I was always looking for that edification from a, a male figure. Some stuff happened to me that shouldn't happen to a child at a very young age. Yeah. And I just really embodied that. And so uh, when I left the military, I um, ended up getting into bodybuilding. And so I remember the first time, man, I stepped on stage as a bodybuilder. I was a chubby kid growing up, didn't get the girls, wasn't a good athlete. And um, I stepped on stage and I probably shouldn't have done that bodybuilding show, but I, I had transformed my body. I had abs for the first time. And, you know, I was that guy that was kind of the, the courtesy clap on stage, but <laughs> I, 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 the people cheering for me was like, it was, it, I was addicted right away, man. Yeah. I was like, Oh my God. And then I got yeah. really into bodybuilding. And so it became my whole obsession from got out of the military in 2000, right before 9-11, 2001. And then I got obsessed with bodybuilding. And so it was very healthy at first because I was, you know, changing my body, fitness, mindset. Yeah. Um, I just had very low self-esteem, extremely low self-esteem. And then um, I had well, a leg injury. That was like feeling that at that point, right? With the applause and everything? Oh, my like, God. Like yeah. It was, I was, yeah. Wow. It was like I, I'd never you know, been a good athlete. So I'd never yeah. had that. And, you know, my, my father was really into sports and I tried every sport and I just wasn't good. So I just yeah. felt like a failure, right? And so... Um, I had a leg injury. So before a bodybuilding show and I ended up going to a doctor and mm. he prescribed me Vicodin. And um, I, I was a clean cut dude, never took, 
really any drugs or anything like that. And I remember taking the first pill, man, for my leg injury because I wanted to train through it. And yeah. I remember, I remember exactly the underpass I drove under, the feeling like I got this overwhelming like euphoria feeling in my body, and I was like. Oh my God. And I had this confidence that I've never felt before. Wow. It's not, it's not a good thing. By yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. you know, I start. I'm at a grocery store and I still kind of start talking to people and I was like, wow. And so I, you know, the injury still hurt, but the next day I'm like, well, I'll take it again for my training. And then, you know, I started taking just, you know, clean cut dude, like yeah. a lot of opiate addict stories. I started taking two pills, then three pills. Then I, I needed it to function. Then it was five pills, six pills, seven pills, 20 yeah, pills. Yeah. And back then that was an epidemic. I mean, they were giving it out like candy is 2000. I think I started back in 2000, late 2003 going into 2004. And it Remember was just, that, it was yeah. an epidemic epidemic i mean yeah. you could get them from canada you could get them so my doctor stopped prescribing them to me so i found another doctor you could just pay them under the table and uh, i just became a junkie a full-blown junkie man i was running a bodybuilding company yeah. at the time and um that actually helped your lifting it didn't no it did yeah i mean i became a mess i was a, i was wow. a complete disaster i mean in the beginning i still was doing pretty well yeah but by 2006 is when the demise really started. What happened was, is I was a functional opiate addict. I was taking, you know, up to 20 pills a day, functioning, yeah. running my company. And uh, people like that, like 20 Vikes yeah. during the day and then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of Ambien at night to bring you back down. Exactly what sleep. I was doing. The, the problem was, though, is that I started to hang around with different crowds because yeah. I was changing my frequency. I was, uh, you know, buying opiates on the black yeah, market. Yeah. So I started to access other drugs and it just like a clean cut dude to a full blown junkie and um i ended up taking an injectable painkiller called nubay and then that was that was the the mm -hmm. demise uh, i became extremely addicted forgot i even was running a company my three-year-old daughter was you know i'm just going to be fully transparent you know i was a shitty father man my daughter was one day was in her diaper all day just shit in her diaper i remember mom picked her up and i just became a, a complete i don't know how to say this like i'm trying not to get emotional talking about it but in 2006 okay, it spiral yeah in july in july 2006 i had you know Plenty of money in my bank account, but by yeah. December 18, 2006, my bank account was empty and I went to Walmart to uh, go Christmas shopping on December 18th for my daughter. And uh, by this time, I'm just, I'm buying hundreds of dollars worth of drugs a day. And uh, I swiped my debit card, it declined. So I swiped my credit card, it declined. I swiped my business card, it declined. I swiped every card and ladies like, you know, we can't keep swiping. So I go to the bank and I'd never overdrafted my account in my life. And they turned the, the banker had turned the, um, the screen to me and it was red. And just, wow. he's like, everything's overdrafted, man. He's like, you have no money. And I'm like, what? And it kind of like, I was in such a fog for such a long time. I was like, what do you mean that? And the manager's like, you're broke. And I'm like, and all these voices started coming in my head. Like the, the, the gig is yeah. over, dude. Like yeah. it's your lie is over. Your, the money is gone. You're, you're, and all that insecurity came back and everything. And, um, I went to my office, uh, I had a, a company inside of a gym. And so I went into the office and, um, I just loaded as much as I could into a, as many syringes as I could. It was ejectable painkiller. And, um, First time I'd ever prayed or had access to spirituality ever. I'd never was introduced to God or Jesus Christ or anything like any type of spirituality growing up. We were mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic, but went to church for Easter and you know funerals. And um, I knelt down and prayed to God. I was like, "Dear God, please forgive me. This is not how I wanted it to end up." And um, I just kept a trench, boom, I throw it, and I, I set up a a mattress so my parents wouldn't find me laying on the ground. Yeah, and um, that's all I remember. And then I woke up. That's where the secret comes in. Huh. Um, my phone is ringing. If you remember the Razor flip phones, they had the little, oh, little yeah, screen man. on the front of them. Yep. And so that distinct ring. And I was like, and this is so wild about thoughts becoming things because I, I opened my eyes and I'm like, I'm not dead. And I was like, the first thought was, I can't even kill myself correctly. That was my <laughs> first thought. Wow. And so my, my, I said mom on it. I pick it up. She had no idea that I attempted suicide. She had no idea that it woke me up from this. Yeah. It was 48 hours later opened the phone and my mom's a very classy lady. And she's like, I don't know what the F is going on with you. She never cusses or anything. She's like, I don't know what the F is going on with you, but you need to read a book called The Secret. Your grandma just read it. So I went and got that book, that actually specific book. And um, I went and read the book and I'm like, oh my God, I created all of this. Nobody did. People did things to things to me in the physical, but I decided to adopt that as my identity. Yeah. And that was my thoughts, my everyday, I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy. And so... Here I am, broke now, can't even take care of my three-year-old daughter, uh, getting evicted from my apartment, drug addict, couldn't even kill myself correctly. I'm like, well, wait a minute. 
So what if I just, I mean, I'm at the bottom. There's, there's no other yeah, way to go. Yeah. I couldn't even kill myself. <laughs> and so I was like, what if I just reframe my thoughts? And so I started doing, I am affirmations. I am powerful. I am strong. I am worthy. I am abundant. I kept repeating it. You know, I went through Those this. Those are tough the first time, right? Brutal, man. Dude. Brutal. And then yeah. I was, and also I'm coming off the drugs. And so I'm coming off and I just, I shouldn't have done this. I rehabbed my, I went to my apartment. The, mm. I was getting evicted. I had nothing left in there. Puked for about a week straight. Started getting some hydration going. And then I started to do this thing where I would, you know, I close my eyes when I say it's hard for me not get emotional, but I would put my hands on the sink and I would open my eyes and look in my eyes and I would say it in, I would look into my eyes and say it. And about a week and a half in, I started to believe it. I'm like, oh my God. And I would start to smile at myself yeah. in the mirror. And I'm like, I am powerful. I am strong. Just like I'm smiling now, it makes me smile. I am worthy. I'm abundant. <laughs> and then uh, about two weeks later, I, I started, yeah. to, I woke up one day and I'm like, I feel normal. I feel as I didn't remember what it felt like to feel normal, like yeah. a normal person. And so I remember walking outside. I went for a walk, man, and I, I had been so not connected to my body the my whole beginning of my my life up into thirty one years old, and that I had never noticed the world. And I was walking, and I saw a flower. I'm like, that's a pretty flower. And I was like, did I just say that's a pretty flower? <laughs> and I was like, I did it. <laughs> Where'd my man would go? <laughs> yeah, and I went and sat down at this this place called uh, Valvista Lakes, and I went and sat in the grass, and I and I started using my imagination. There's big lake houses, and I'm like, mm. I would picture my me and my daughter barbecuing. And I'd picture like getting on the lake boat, yeah. and I would do all this stuff, and. And then my life just started mm -hmm. to change one opportunity after another, man. It was just like, um, and I started to see the change. But from that point on, it was kind of like, it was like I had forgiven my own past. And that's why I call myself JV. John Boscus died in my mind. And a new person was born, which was JV. And JV only had the ability to live present and build forward, right? And I realized that actually all the things I was worried about, everybody was worried about themselves. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Nobody was really, yeah, you know, like yeah, of not, course. You, you're not that special, right? That's what you ended up realizing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, or, or yeah, or we are all special yeah, in our own right way, on. and that you know. And I'm worried about me. You're like worried that. about you. Yeah. I'm worried about my family. You know, we're all you know great gifts from God, and um, right and on. It's, right on. it's been yeah, it's been this journey for 17 years, and here we are now, man. <laughs> Dude, I love so, it. And there's a lot in between that, but yeah, yeah. So. I, I love when you. <laughs> I love every bit of your story. The only thing I don't love is when you hold back the emotion, you know, and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm going to get emotional right here. And it's a, uh, be, uh, I, I love you because you're like already, Obviously. like everybody is captivated for real. I am. I know mm -hmm. that. But everybody Thank is captivated you. because I am. And it's, God, you, you can just see it like in your eyes too, man. That's the thing. I mean, mo most are listening on audio, but it's like, I'm looking right at you and it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Especially when you Thank talked you, about your daughter, dude, when she was three. She Saved my life, man. She yeah. saved my life. She's a beautiful nineteen-year-old girl turning twenty now. She's That's uh, awesome. and it's and it's interesting because it's like for anybody who, oh man, for anybody that's suffering with addiction or like, uh, I was not a good father to her from birth to about four years old, and that's the most essential time for a child, their brain development, yeah. right? And I put her through hell mm. she was in crack houses with me buying drugs like she was shit you know shit in her diaper like the worst father you could ever be right her mom was involved too but I, when i had her i was just a, a derelict right yeah. I, all i cared about was drugs i didn't care about taking care of her and um what i want to tell people if anybody's struggling with that it's like me and my daughter have the most phenomenal relationship now mm. and it was uh they did a little uh a, it never came out but they were filming a little documentary about us and it was neat to actually and i think why it happened i don't know if the guy just didn't was lying or what it didn't come out but yeah. why it happened was is because they interviewed they interviewed my daughter and i've always held like a t a ton of guilt for putting her through that it's like when they interviewed her she actually asked me to step out of the room because they wanted her to be as completely honest as possible and uh I sat outside and it's actually was next door in my office mm. and I was listening and I'm like, Oh my God. And like, she, she goes, you know, I don't remember much about that, but I do remember he was my hero. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. Like I felt so much guilt for that. And she said, what I love about it is I've seen what he's gone through and then we lost everything again in mm -hmm. 2020, which is, which is the Cinderella story. I, mean, I, I had a Cinderella story <laughs> that we lost everything because of the pandemic. And she goes, I've seen what my dad does when the times are tough. And that's what made me who I am today. And oh I'm like, God. holy shit. And I was like, and it, it just changed the way that I saw. And now I have, you know, I have a son and I run, this is not ironic. This is 
divine. My son was born. I, I committed suicide on December 18th, 2006. I had a son on December 18th, 2015. <laughs> and so we named him John Vasquez. And it was like, she, he was supposed to be born on December 25th. And I really believe that God gave me another opportunity, not only to be the, it's not my father didn't do anything wrong. He's a great human being. He did what he knew what to do best. He provided, I just never had a loving relationship with him. So I, I know that God presented me because God saw that I went through the healing process and he said, he gave me a son and a beautiful daughter that now I can do the opposite right complete and i always say yeah. my even though i don't have a great relationship with my father i call him my greatest shaman ever because he has made me a great father because i do the opposite of everything he did you know i look my kids in the eyes every day i love you i appreciate you you're powerful you're strong and my son uh, i spoke affirmations into him in the womb all the way to now he's just like oh, this mo he's a monster man he's <laughs> he's i was just telling somebody this morning before i came out here he was uh, i had him for a little bit and I, I play like Indian flute music, just like yeah. positive music all the time in my house. I walk into his room and he's sitting there meditating. I'm like, you can't make this shit up, dude. I'm like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was like, so anybody that out there is maybe suffering with addiction and you know, you feel your kids see you as a superhero. They really, really mm -hmm. do. And it's like, and no matter how bad it got, she saw the victory that I that I that I that I created through it, right? And yeah. it's like and you know, it's, she's just such an awesome, awesome young woman now. And so, yeah, if anybody who feels guilty and stuff like that, and I still feel guilt, I still do. It's, it's part of, you know, the growth process, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever completely squashable, brother. Yeah. You it's, know, it, yeah, but it's part of your, it's, it yeah. becomes part of your, almost your story and your identity. Yeah. Right. And it's like, um, but I also make sure that I, 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 I talk good to myself though, that I am a good father, that I, you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm healed now. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm here for her now. And that, so when those thoughts come in, I use the affirmations to make sure that I reframe myself because what we're doing is, you know, it's, it's, you know, we have free will to think, to walk, to talk, to act. And the thoughts that we're currently experiencing now is the future of tomorrow. There's a delay process, right? Yeah. How I'm feeling today is going to be my Saturday and my Sunday and the decisions yeah. I make today is my Saturday and my Sunday. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about life. The sun's going to come up the sun came up the next day after I committed suicide, which proved to me that, and you know, I call it Jesus Christ. The sun came back up and it was like, yeah. okay, holy shit. I get another chance. And every day we all get another chance. And, um, yeah, yeah it's cool. been this weekend is Easter, right? <laughs> yeah. It's powerful. man. Yeah, That's right. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, uh, doing another show today. Like, oh yeah. Do you celebrate? I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a celebration thing. I just think it's mm. more of a truth thing. Truth, yeah. Truth. Yeah. Jesus Christ is so real to me, man. Yeah. So God and Jesus Christ, just in a, in a, in an, you know, I always, I, I love talking about this. This is one of the, that's why I built my own companies because in, in corporate America, I couldn't talk about politics or God. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> and I built companies, you can talk about whatever the hell you want, man. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you know, to me, Christ is so, like, people ask me, you know, well, how did you become so successful? I say, Christ. And like, we'll explain that. It's really tapping in and tuning into Jesus Christ is the greatest representation of belief, right? He took undisciplined people and made them disciplined. Yeah. That's what disciples Carpenters, are. Carpenters, fishermen. Yeah. The, took the, us. The, the exactly. Yeah. Me, a broken ass dude that, you know, was a junk, junkie, horrible father and showed him the way in the light. And, and it's not that, it's not that complicated. It's not, there's not all these hoops you have to jump through. It's like, you know, you hold them in your heart and you're kind to people and, you know, the, be, be grateful for what you have and try to love people the best you can and, you know, try to see, see goodness in other people. Right. And so that's been one of my biggest changes too, is like over the past seven years, specifically in the last four is really going through that spiritual walk with Christ and God and, you know, and, and, and really finding a love for humanity. And that's what, that's why I think I was, I was saved for all this. Cause it's like, I have such a deep love for humanity yeah. that it's just, it's just, it's an amazing thing. Like I just, I know we're all going through a lot right now in our world, in our country. And it's like, it, you know, and you know, there's, there's all these things happening that are just so dark, but what, what I've learned is the darker it gets, the more we can transmute that light into greatness, mm. you know? I love that. It's interesting. Cause it's, <laughs> as I, as I age, right. And as I get more deep into my, to myself and, and into God, my compassion for everybody else and my love for everybody else increases. Yes. And it, I've always been patient, man, you know, and I can see that that's the same with you for everyone else. But I mean, there's always days where you're like, really, dude, whoever you are, you know, you had to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to pull that. You know? Yes. But then it's you know, like, go ahead. Yeah. 
I, I just wanted to, so I did, yeah. I have, uh, there's a gentleman that, uh, he's a great, uh, spiritual coach that I, I, I really honor. And, um, I, 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 I'm constantly like, I realized when I realized I know nothing, I became the smartest man in the world. And I realized I had everything. Yeah. I got everything I needed. Right. And so what I'm just a student of life and we're out, we're out in the forest one day and we're just talking and like hiking. And I said, I might just stop. And I said, who is God, man? Like, who is God? Yeah. And, he, yeah. and he said, cause I'm just, I'm on this path to just find just, uh, just to find myself, not, not, not to find God, because I know God is all yeah. things and anything. He said, well, let me ask you a question. He said, I'm not going to tell you who I think God is, but let me ask you a question. He said, do you believe God and Jesus Christ are perfect? And I said, yes. I said, 100%. He said, so how does God, and he said it, because God, people say father often because it's masculine, right? Father, yeah, the yeah. creator, father, the son, the son of, and then the earth is mother, Gaia, the two become one. And so he said, how does the father God know that he or it is perfect? And I'm like, that's a great question. Hmm. He's like, through you. He's like, he comes here through you to experience imperfection, to remember how perfect he actually is. And he's like, so imagine a world. He said, you don't have to believe this, but imagine a world that everybody you look, including me in the eyes right now, that I am made in the likeness image of God. And he said, if you saw God face to face, how would you treat God? I was like, oh my God. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. He said, just adopt that and you'll be close to God. He's like, you're, what, if, what if you're talking to God and I'm talking to God and we're all God experiencing imperfection? And, and, and at any point, we have free will to make a decision. We can think, we can walk, we can talk, and we can control our emotions. Yeah. Right? But this whole ecosystem that's been created, whether it's the devil being the prince of earth, whatever it is, has, or for me, let me just speak from my personal experience, like my own awakening process, like something within the physical world made me believe I wasn't worthy, which pushed me deep in the left hemisphere of the brain, which was facts, figures, numbers, logic. Yeah. But I became illogical and started to speak goodness into myself which what is that, right? And then I started to operate in the right hemisphere of the brain. I started to create different things. And now I operate in the right hemisphere of the brain, which is creation, intuition, which brings things to 3D form. So when I realized my power in my thought, my power in being able to control my actions and most of all my emotions through the process of creation, because in the process of creation, there must be density for things to come into form, right? So the two become one. You have a child that's exciting. Hey, we're pregnant. We're having a baby. And then all the, the mother has to go through this crazy birthing process. It's violent, a violent process to the baby to come into form, right? And that's how creation works. So when we decide, we think of something, it's exciting. We go to build a business. We get the business plan. We get the money. It's fun. Then you start actually building the business. Yeah, and then yeah. all the density kicks in, right? And then, yeah, then it, it becomes does. dense. It becomes imperfect. And all of a sudden, you and have you your first out. sale. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's just, I learned that this process is happening at a micro level in all of us yeah. and the macro level in the world. And if we all realize that we are actually the cause and effect of all this, then there would be peace and prosperity. But that's not what the design is. It's for each person to figure out who they are within this experience, you know? Yeah, for sure. You, you mentioned something a little while back, and it, I love this because I'm not talking much for real. It's, it's no, awesome. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. Like I'm saying, literally, I love this because I'm just mm. soaking everything in these. That you're saying that when you said that when, once you realize you had everything you needed you know then you got everything that came after that i don't remember exactly how you said that you said a lot more eloquently than i did just did it, it was uh i start to think of the concept because there's often as long as we're on god and spirituality there's often a concept of you know pray for what you want you know god will provide god will provide god will provide mm -hmm. and my thought process has already been he already did Yes. You know, <laughs> it's, a, yes. it's like it, it, you've got all of these things in front of you, you know, and he's just waiting mm -hmm. for you to be like, oh, there it is, you yes. know, and to actually do something with that. You know, it's almost yes. like one person once described it to me, uh, used the illustration of like checkers. You know, it's kind of like it, it is literally that to where it's like you cannot skip moves, you know, when God moves and gives you something, it's like now it's up to you to move. Mm, now it's yes. up to you to do something with what he laid out in front of you because it's like you yes. know you see these things it's like what are you talking about you know there's somebody like on an island you know or drowning or mm -hmm. something like that and it's uh, i've seen this illustration a lot of times before and it's like you know the, the boat goes by hey you know come on what will save you? it's like no 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 thanks i'm waiting for god to save me you know and then, then a plane comes by and it's like no 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 thanks i'm waiting for god to save me you know and then you know something else it's like an animal or something like that comes by like hop on my back or whatever you know the, a whale you know yes. no thanks i'm waiting for god to save me and then he dies he drowns 
you know, yes. and then up in heaven, it's like, God, why do you need to save me? He's like, what are you talking about? I sent you a boat. I sent you a plane. <laughs> I sent yes. you a freaking whale. You know, everything that you needed was right there in front of you. And I truly believe yes. that it's a, I think there's a, a minimization of God that exists in our culture. 100%. You know, it's like. 100%. Hundred percent. Isn't he big enough to where he literally just gave you everything you need already? Sure, you can yes. build skill sets over time or whatever, but it's like he imparted that into you literally when you were born. Yes. Yeah. If you can, this is truth. If you can think it, it can be created. Yeah. That that's a fact. It, all the God is everything. God is no thing. God is all things. God has always been. There is no, like God is, is the beginning of creation is, is a thought. It's, it's a thought like, it, like, oh, I love this conversation, man. So like, <laughs> I, I love going back to Jesus and cause I'm obsessed with Jesus's life and studying every angle. Like, like, um, you know, like for example, like this is, this is one thing that I share with people a lot. And, um, cause I just, I love to learn. And I, I said to somebody one time, a Christian was pushing back on how I talk about Jesus and consciousness. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, where was Jesus at for 18 years? And he was like, I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> I said, my friend, I said, if you, if you, you're my friend, I said, if you disappeared, I said, we're acquaintances. I mean, you know, you're pushing back on my belief system. I said, if you disappeared for 18 years, I know who you are. And, and you came back on a donkey. You're, you're the king of the world. Like everybody's calling you Messiah, blah, blah, blah. And you came back on a donkey with Birkenstocks and a sheet around you. I'd be like, where the hell have you been? <laughs> yeah, for real. But every Christian I talk to or people, they, they never ask where Jesus, there's only one verse and it's in the Old Testament that says he grew in relationship with man and God. Mm -hmm. If you were gone for 18 years, I would ask you, now he comes back on a donkey. Why did he come back on a donkey? He was humbled. Donkeys represent yeah. humility. So he comes back on it. If, if you're the king of the world, you'd be on a stallion, right? Yeah, right a cool little, like, <laughs> so then he goes to all these, there's all these Pharisees and they're wearing these, these amazing, they got these big churches and stuff. And he says, sit in the back in the church so you buy to the front. So he goes and finds people like me, a drug addict. And he's like, hey, yo, hey, listen, I know, I know that shit happened to you as a kid. I, I, I know you don't believe in yourself. He's like, but I'm here to tell you that I am in you. Like uh, you're made in my not likeness and image. You can do this. You have to believe in yourself. But unless you believe in yourself, I cannot pray for you. And he starts to empower these people and he started to teach them the secret. They're like, oh, yeah. I am powerful. I am strong. I'm worthy. And then he walks up to a guy in a mat who's waiting for a fountain, who's waiting for Trump to come back, waiting for Jesus to come out of the sky. Yeah. If you get to that fountain, well, he's paralyzed. Everybody's jumping over him. Yeah. And he yeah. looks at the guy in the eyes and they're all like, Jesus, they're going to, he's like, whatever. He walks, <laughs> looks in the guy's eyes and said, do you want to be saved? And the guy says, yes. He says, pick up your mat and walk. And then he tells another guy, he's like, hey, listen, the guy's blind. And he's like, well, this guy's not going to believe me that I could get him to heal himself. So I'm going to have him put mud on his eyes. If I can get him to believe that this mud has some type of magical powers, now he he believes that something, maybe it's, uh, what's it called? Sublingual? Yeah. Like he's sublingual. He's like, puts the mud on there. He's like, this is magic mud. And he's like, well, as long as you believe it's something, <laughs> right? It's like, and so I started, and, the, and then he gets on this uh, Sermon on the Mount. Sorry if I say it incorrectly, Sermon on the Mount. And he inverts everything. He's like, slap me on one cheek. It used to be eye for an eye. He's like, slap me on one cheek. I'll let you slap me on the other. You sue me for my shirt, I'm going to give you my jacket. Yeah. You tell me to walk a mile, I'm going to walk two. And so how I interpreted that was, there's a lot of physicality happening within the world. And there's a lot of people telling you how to believe in God and how to do this. And you got to jump through hoops. And you got to do all this stuff. And Jesus is like, dude, let all that physical go. He's like, to get in the kingdom of heaven is to be like these lowly children. I'm like, what does that mean? The reason why he taught children first is because they had no conscious mind. Right so on. when we get to thinking stinking, when we start thinking stinking at eight years old and we get a conscious mind, we from eight to 80, we mess it all up. And we, you said it we forget that we already can do it. And so we're yeah. praying, God, please help me. God, please help me. I need a job. He's like, McDonald's is hiring, man. Yeah, right on. <laughs> For sure. Go get a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I did that. So, I did stand up on, on Broadway a couple of years ago. And that was one of a joke in my, my, my oh, bit no that I did. For real. Yeah. I was like, oh you know, God. I used to get these things because I'm an ordained pastor, right? To help plant tr three churches, right? Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, yeah, now, now, now I do this. It's fun. <laughs> it's, that's it's, amazing. It's, oh my God. <laughs> but I was up there and and I was like, you know, I used to get all these people. It's like, oh, oh, you know, pastor, pray for me. You know, I, I, I just got laid off. You know, I, I really, really need a job, you know. And it's like, man, it's like, well, what in the world? It's like you just got the offer over there. I'm like, you know, hurry up. 
Taco Bell won't be hiring forever. You know, it's like, like <laughs> yes, yeah. Or they yeah. or they are laid off, and like you know, I got this, uh, I got this offer, but I just don't think that's what God wants for me. You know, and oh, it's like, it's like, oh my gosh! But then it's in a scenario like like you're describing yourself. It's like you've got, mm. you know, you, you you literally go from like something to absolutely nothing, like no income coming in whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And then it's mm-hmm. and it's like, well, if it's right there, you said McDonald's, but it's like, hurry up! Taco Bell is going to hire somebody yes. else. <laughs> yes, and so like what happened for me is like in 2020, like so I leave corporate American. T- I, uh, so I, I you know I committed suicide. I read the secret. Yeah. End up getting a banking job. It was great. Like most unlikely. <laughs> job ever I'm, i have severe dyslexia i found that out in the Whoa. military it's crazy i thought you know in in school everything that could have gone wrong in school like everything as a child it was just like but it, i'm grateful because it made me who i am today yeah, but yeah. Um, i didn't even know i had dyslexia all through school they were putting me in this you know different classes and stuff because of it, it I, they didn't they never tested me for dyslexia so i'm in the military and i'm going through all these classes i keep failing tests and the guy's like let me verbally test you and i aced it he's like i think you have dyslexia man so they tested me i find out in the military i have dyslexia and so i'm like so i have <laughs> dyslexia like i'm you know i'm a failed bodybuilder failed business owner drug addict and because of the secret or belief in myself uh the guy that helped me get through this he calls me up one day and he's like hey um uh I want you to interview for this job. And I'm like, I, I will clean the toilets, dude. I don't care. I need to pay the rent. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so he's like, so I, he said, it's a banker job. And I'm like a banker job. And I'm like, I don't care, dude. So I went and got a suit. I still, I think I still have the suit in a box in my, in my garage. And I bought it at a Goodwill, like a thrift store. I had no money at this point, like 50 cents. I buy this suit and I show up this oversized suit. And this lady, Lori Schmidt interviewed me. I love this lady for the rest of my life. And she, I'm interviewing with her and I'm like, I keep thinking about my daughter. I'm doing the affirmations. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we're going to have a, we're going to get an apartment and a house. And I meet with her and, and uh, I go through the process. And at the end of the interview, I said, Lori, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was like, if you hire me, I promise you, I will be the best employee you've ever brought on board. So I leave and I'm like, there's no way. I mean, there was people interviewing their banker. It's a banker. Yeah, and so yeah. she calls me 15 minutes later and she says, hey, Lori, my heart drops. And she's like, hey, we're going to hire you. And I said, really? And I said, what, am I going to clean the toilets? Like, what? She's <laughs> like, we're going to hire you as a banker. She said, we can train you. She said something powerful. She said, we like your energy. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's weird. I, and I, and, and I was like, okay. So then I go, I go in there. I did very well as a banker, end up getting my own bank branch. And then I moved up to executive really fast to VP. And when I got hired for the next two positions, I wasn't the most qualified education wise, but both of them said, we like your energy. Energy. And I'm like, what the hell is this energy thing? And so I go through this whole, (laughs) I move up in the bank and then that, that energy thing, started to change. People said, your energy, like you feel off because now I was doing something and I have another addiction now is edification is back. Now I'm a banker, the 535 by BMW, yeah. keeping up with the Joneses, the VPs have BMW, so I need to get a BMW. And it was just like, so now I have this new addiction of keeping up with everybody, right? Because yeah, now yeah. that's a Cinderella story. Went to school, I got a job, got a 401k. And I'm like, this is life, man. So I go through recovery, do the secret, and now I'm miserable in my banking job. Absolutely, my 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 daughter actually talked about that. Wow. She was like, my dad was, you know, we had a lot of money, you know, we we were doing very well, we're going on trips. My dad was always stressed out, always focused on like when or was our vacation going to be over. And wow. I, I followed my gut feeling. I walked out of corporate America in 2017. I just walked out, mm-hmm. and um, and that's when life really changed me. That's what the conversation we just had. I went from praying for stuff and thanking God for the things that were already created. And it changed my life. It was like, because every day I do this, my son does, my daughter's like, thank you God so much for our billion dollar ecosystem. And I'm very, very, very intentional on what I mean by billion dollar ecosystem, Mm. schooling systems, uh, resources, uh, you know, programs for single moms, all these different things. And, and, and God is providing that stuff. I mean, we're not to billion dollar, we're multi-million dollar ecosystem. Now we're building, but what I encourage people is to get out of that lack of the lack of thinking that it's something it's inside of you. It's a connection to the field and frequency. All possibilities exist. If you really believe in God, then all possibilities exist. They all exist. Wow. Wow. You just have to connect to it. That's so freaking powerful, man. I mean, we could probably even go off even on like the physicality of that too, how thoughts mm-hmm. connect to your muscles mm-hmm. and everything else. It's like, yes. I see, you know, I know that it was, uh, mm-hmm. I watched, uh, a documentary in 2013 called fat sick and nearly dead mm. and it's a it's probably still on netflix you know and it was uh 
this dude who started juicing, you know, but it was more not so much that he just started juicing. He just started understanding and started thinking the thoughts, exactly what you're saying. It's like, yeah. this is going to be what, what gets me healthy. It's going to mm -hmm. cure my cure, mm -hmm. liver problems. It's going to cure my, my kidney problems. You know, it's going to allow me yeah. to be of a healthy weight, you know, and I was very overweight at the time. I was 80 pounds heavier than what I am right now. Mm. Yeah, and in that process, you know, I looked at that. I'm like, huh. And then this dude walked down the hall at a movie theater. I love this. And it's like, he just looked at me. He's like, what's up, chubby? I was like, whoa. What? <laughs> yeah, I was like, just, I, I didn't know him. Not, not at all. Oh, my you know? God. Yeah. So I, I go, and I'm like, I mean, I was kind of flabbergasted. You know, I love that yeah. word. That's one of my favorite words on the planet, by the way. <laughs> it's a great flabbergasted. Word. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it was that. And it's like, when I started to do that, I lost the weight. But then when I said, you know, I really didn't put on the muscle mass that I have now until mm. a couple of years ago, you know, but I, I started recognizing in my workouts when I would lift that yeah. because I used to, dude, I mean, even like this, right? MacBook. Right. Yeah. I used to like have my MacBook open while I was working out. Mm. I used to have my phone open yeah. while I was working out. It's like I can catch up on a couple of emails. You know, I can, I can get this done, you know, like it, like it, in the in the rest sets in between, you know. Yeah. And but when I started to see the progress is when I just focused like literally with my yes. mind focused on the yeah. exact muscle group that I was working. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my goodness. The, mm -hmm. Even in that, it's like the, the power of thought goes into literally your body. Imagine the power of thought like you're talking about that can go mm -hmm. into every aspect of your life. Yes. You know, and, yes. and I love that, I love that we, we ended up talking about God and Jesus Christ today because it, yeah. it, for everybody that, that doesn't believe or is like on the fence, if they're like a persuadable, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's like, fine. If you don't want to, that's all good. But understand, which I do, is that there's still this stuff like quantum energy that exists. Totally. You know, and I fully yeah. believe that, I mean, uh, we believe in God yeah. Almighty that Amen. actually created that, right? Yes. <laughs> Literally, yes. that energy thing that you're yeah. talking about, it's an energy exchange that happens between two people. Yes, you know? yes. Like, That's so, like, we'll go deeper into, like, this is what I believe Jesus was teaching. And this is, this. Yeah. people get upset at me when I talk about this stuff, but he comes back and I'm just, I have a logical circuit in my brain. I don't know if it's dyslexia, but my brain looks at logic and I read the Bible as a living organism, not a history book. I, I read the Bible as a living organism. Like, okay, and, and the deeper I go and the more I spend time with God and build relationship with God, like a relationship, like I now communicate with God. I'm yeah. like, you know, oh, sorry about that. I, I now, sorry about that. That's right. When you I said now, God, it was perfect. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's but I, now, <laughs> I now communicate with God. And what I mean by that is like, I'm not a God, but I'm having a conversation with my father. Yeah. And I can stop for a moment. I'm in, and I say, well, when two or two, or, this is church, when two or more are gathered. And so the studies that I'm doing of Jesus and, you know, he, he was gone for 18 years. He comes back and he's like, wait a minute, something's not right here. Like, we're not teaching relationship. Like there's something mm. not right here. All these people are chasing this esoteric thing outside of themselves, Yeah. right? They think it's this outside in effect when it's from the inside out, right? And then he, they, they start talking about, there's so many things and you know, you know, you're being an ordained pastor, I would love to get coaching around this. Like I've been studying Moses, goes to a burning bush, he goes up and to the right and he didn't see God face to face. Somebody corrected me on, he saw God's back or something, but he got pretty close to God, yeah, right? Yeah. And right when he yep. gets to God, what does he say? Tells him everything wrong with him. I have a speech mm -hmm. impediment. I have a limp, blah, blah, blah. And God's like, uh-uh, we're not playing this yeah, game. Yeah, right on. Yeah. He's like, from here on out, you are, or no, sorry, I am in the Bible, the great I am. And that goes into the secret. Yeah. So Moses comes down, he turns a snake into a staff, right? It's like, interesting. He turns a snake into a staff. <laughs> now he has confidence. His spine is taut. Yeah. Then he comes down, he goes to the, the slaves, he flees them from the Israelites. They go to the Red Sea. They part the Red Sea and they're all excited and they're free. And then they go into the desert and they lose faith, just yeah. like us. They lose yeah. faith. And what does God do? He sends snakes again to bite them. And But in the Bible, it says, take the snake, put it on the cross and bronze it and face that. Yeah, Like that's, you're creating that. It's your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, put it on the cross and bronze it. Nobody's coming to save you. Then they're fishing in a boat, right? They're fishing in a boat. Jesus is standing on the water. <laughs> Freaking beast. That is amazing, <laughs> yeah. man. He's floating on the water, right? And these guys are fishing on the left side of the boat. They're fishing on the left side of the boat. And he's like, Psst, cast your nets to the right. 
So they throw it to the right and they catch 153 fish. One plus five plus three is nine. Yeah. Right. And the nine, number nine keeps coming up over and over again in the Bible and they catch a bunch of fish, which is wisdom. And underneath the ocean is this big, deep subconscious mind. So they're bringing the wisdom to the surface. And then he tells, I don't remember, was it Jacob? One of them to come out onto the water and he starts to get, well, Peter, sorry, Peter. Yeah. yeah. So he comes out in the water and he starts to, he gets scared, loses faith and starts falling down. And all the subconscious mind programming comes up, all his fears and anxiety. She's like, no, rise above that. You're in the right hemisphere now. You're like the children. Be creative. Yeah. They believe in yourself. And then Peter or uh, Jacob sees God face to face. Yeah. He calls it pineal. He falls yeah. asleep on a rock. He looks at it. There's a, a ladder going up and down to God. And it's like, so I started to, like, instead of arguing with people, I'm like, I'm just going to apply these teachings to my life. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to apply praying in my closet. I pray on Twitter as well. But uh, but my my thought process around that is like, well, if Jacob, so Jacob calls it pineal, right? The pineal gland activates. So I looked, well, how does a pineal gland work? When, you, when you're in darkness, your pineal gland activates. Your pineal yeah. gland is your thoughts. Like, so when you're thinking, when your pineal gland is activated, when I open my eyes, that's the reality that I'm facing, like the secret. So I'm like, so when I'm alone in my thoughts, I should be raising my frequency because 95% of the time we're unconsciously walking through life and only 5% of the time we are actually imagining and creating, right? Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? I think your conscious mind can handle only like 30 data points, but your subconscious mind, your unconscious mind can handle, yeah, exactly. It it is exponential beyond Mm -hmm. that. You know, it's it's into the tens of thousands from what I've seen. Yes. At the same time, instantly, yeah instantly so what yes i love it so he, they're pulling the fish to the yeah. surface which is wisdom it's like oh wait it's all inside of me okay i can do this and and it gets so um convoluted like you know we we have war over religion and yeah. war over god and war over this and it's like i really believe that jesus was like yeah guys it's about relationship it's yeah. about a relationship with your father and then right i think it was you know uh soon before he was crucified. And then he goes to pray to God and he's like, um, and I don't remember the exact prayer, but he's like, why help me father? He's like, kind of goes from that belief yeah. to begging, like the person looking for a job and God stops talking to him. Yep. God's like, who are you talking to? Like, the, that's not me. <laughs> then the devil pops up on his right side, yeah. on his right side. So, so for me, I'm like, okay, so if I take the Bible as a living organism, so when I start begging God, God's like, I don't deal with beggars. We don't do that. I'm the great I am. Like you, you're, that's not me. You're talking to the devil. The devil's the prince of the earth. So if you're not going to believe in yourself, you're going to hang out with your lower carnal mind, which is a devil. If you want to do that, you have free will to do that. But I'm over here. Like I'm, yeah. I'm in the creative state of mind. I believe in you. I freaking love you with all my heart. I'm never going to forsake you. JV, I was in the crack house with you, with your daughter. I never forsaked you. You forsaked me. You, you, you took free will to move. I was always with you. I was sitting right next yep. to you the whole time and the prodigal son. And so I started to apply these, these actual stories to my life. Cause here's what happened to me as I went to um, a church and, um, uh, and these, I was in a Bible study and I have some pretty bad dyslexia, really bad dyslexia. And so they were, I, I'm not a theologian. I couldn't memorize the verses like they did. And so we'd go to this Bible study and uh, these gentlemen, I watch how people live their life. That's how I determine whether you're a Christian or not, right? So, yeah. we're, we, and I would, you know, they were they were really good. They they could spite Bible verses. You know, they were they would be on stage speaking. I'm like, and I was kind of enthralled by that because I was trying to learn about Christ. And uh, we were going to this, you know, uh, breakfast thing, and we do our Bible study, and they'd be like, "Did you do your? Did you remember?" I'm like, "I guys, I'm not, I understand what we're talking about, but I want to ask you guys a question." I said you guys can know the Bible verses, but I see you on Facebook. I see you playing poker with your buddies. You're not paying attention to your wives or spouses. You don't seem to be connected with your kids. I said, isn't that what Christianity, isn't that what being a Christian is? Shouldn't we be doing good works? And they got so pissed at me. And I said, I'm just, I keep it. I said, I keep it real, man. And so that pissed me off. And so they got upset at me. So I went on my own mission. I'm like, I'm going to, go read this book as if it's a living organism. And no matter how long it takes me to read it, no matter how many people I need to talk to, and I just started learning from different people. Um, And then somebody comes to me and says, hey, your belief system is wrong, especially when I talk like that about the right hemisphere of the brain. They say, your belief system is wrong. I said, why do you believe what you believe? That's my question back. And they'll say to me, well, my pastor told me that. So So why do you believe it though? Yeah. Have you applied this to your life? How is Christ working in your life? 
And the answer is just like, wow, I never thought about that. I'm like, you should. You should start thinking about it. We yeah, should all sure. start thinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should all There's start a thinking concept, again. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we did, if we all started thinking, because you know, like we got the craziest presidential election coming up in human history. It's like, yeah. and everybody's waiting for a savior to come back. Everybody's yeah. waiting for Jesus to come out of the sky or Trump to come and save him. And it's like, <laughs> dude, I laugh. I look at the choices and I just let Well, like it's like, yeah. It's, like, well, the, it's comical sorry, so. in some ways, you know? <laughs> It, it it's, it's man it's 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 like a historical pattern that keeps repeating it itself. is absolutely it is yeah it's like jesus's timeline it's like looking at the pharisees and it's just like what come on yeah. get out of your egos guys like let's yeah. just go build together let's expand consciousness yeah. together and that's what's beautiful about this timeline and, and what i believe is like this is a beautiful timeline it's almost like a christ consciousness timeline yeah. i believe that christ is awakening in people right now and, and i said this now i would love to hear your thoughts on this is um, somebody asked me, how can you believe in Jesus so much? I said, I said, this is the way I think about it. If I went to every adult in the world and I asked them, have you ever heard of Jesus? Have you ever heard of Jesus? They'd probably say yes. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. For the most part. So if, Absolutely. if every single adult says yes, why, why he's the biggest influencer in the world. So wouldn't that mean he's in us? If everybody knows who he is. Yeah. Like, how could somebody know one person? Like, he's the number one influencer yeah, in the right world. <laughs> you know, it's not Charlie DeMaio on, on yep. TikTok. <laughs> it's not The Rock. It's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whether you hate him or love him, you know him. He's undefeated. Yeah. He is undefeated. They killed him, and we still can't keep him out of our mouth. He's the top G, man. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Uh, right on, my man. It's yeah. a, it's a, my mind went to, it's like the, you said like he's the number one influencer. The Bible is literally like the number one bookseller every single year too. You know, yeah. I don't know why Trump thinks he has to help that along with his $59 USA Bible. But it's, a, oh, it's just, <laughs> it's so interesting. It's yeah. just, and what I realized too, is it was a, I had a really funny uh, uh, moment with my coach and it was like, sometimes I get caught in these rabbit holes. I study a lot and I was like, yeah. Somebody asked me if the earth was flat. And so I started looking at flat earth stuff and you know, it's convincing, blah, blah, blah. And I went to him and I just love my coach. And he was like, I go, Hey man, what do you think? He's really smart. And I said, is the earth flat dude? And he goes, okay, JB, the earth is flat. Cool. He goes, what are you going to do tomorrow? He goes, the earth is square now. What are your activities and behaviors you're going to do? He goes, who cares if it's square? Yeah. <laughs> who cares if it's purple? Who cares if it's green? He goes, what are you going to do when you wake up? What, how are you going to treat your kids? If it's flat, what does it do for you? Nothing. He's like, what? what, what? Like dude, everybody's spending dude, so much energy. Goes, I cannot spend the entertain energy. that thought because I'd be the guy that'd be like, I'm going to go find one of the corners. I want to see what the corner looks like. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I, but the whole point of what is, it's like everybody's waiting for something when it's yeah. all inside of you. And, and it's, what I believe is it's all hidden in plain sight waiting for you to find it and, yeah. and um, make the path to light difficult so the weak and weary will not follow. And where God is not weak. God is not yeah. weary. God, God is disciplined. God is, that's what disciples are. God is, and so I was like, the more disciplined I become in my spiritual life, my financial life, my mental life, the more I know Christ. And yeah. I believe that's what, I think that's what being a disciple is. At least we'll figure that out along the way, I think. Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> dude, dude, I've had such an amazing time just soaking everything in today that you've Thank said you, i appreciate who you are Thank you. Know, you. i'd love to meet your daughter someday too i'd love for my daughter to meet your daughter you know it's yeah she's amazing <laughs> man. she's amazing yeah <laughs> that's awesome mine are my twins are 16 uh boy and oh, girl wow. yeah so cl close-ish right yeah but it's yeah. uh man i i commend you i, I do Thank and you. I, you know I, I know you don't need it i get that you know but at the same time i, I want to tell you that i see you i it see that i see the guilt that you still carry you know, I see the ability that you've had to rise above all of that because you've recognized that you've literally had everything the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I love that you're in this world because you're able to help every single one of those two million subscribers mm -hmm. see the same thing. You know, and it's a, like even stuff like this, you have seriously enriched my life today. Thank you, man. You know, on, on this Good Thank Friday. You. And it's like the, the pleasure seriously is all mine. And I don't know how we got connected and how <laughs> I ended up getting you booked, you know, because it's that's my yeah. team and everybody else. But dude, you're amazing. Mm. And I appreciate you. Thank you. So, Love you, brother. Keep shining. Keep shining. You know, keep Thank showing you. people that energy vibe, too, because awesome. you can feel it. That was the one thing I was going to say earlier. It's like for people that don't don't believe in God, you know, but when we were talking about quantum energy, it's like, have you ever had somebody just like walk up to you and all of a sudden you just feel off? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> without exactly, yeah. without yeah. speaking any kind of words whatsoever, it's like all they have to do is enter your space. You know, within about six feet of you, and you can just feel it. Likewise, just yeah. like you and, and Linda, I think you said her name was right. 
the the interviewer uh, uh, um, Lori Schmidt Lori, Lori Schmidt, Schmidt that's yeah, it yeah. yeah same scenario it's like you walk you, into that you, and they're like man there's something you said something here. powerful like how many feet apart did they have us during the pandemic yeah six feet yep we didn't want to send each other's auric field man yeah right on we couldn't connect with each other man we couldn't connect we that couldn't. was horrible I don't believe yeah. in Zoom dates as a first date. <laughs> Weird stuff. Man. For sure, but man. The great thing about it is, look, we're, you know, it connected things like this. Like that's that, you know, it took us. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a pandemic ended up becoming the greatest thing that ever happened to our, For sure. our community. It was like, I mean, I've met the coolest people since then. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you for everything. Where can everyone you. find you? Uh, simply uh, Coach JV, like Junior Varsity, Coach JV, or the 3 twarrioracademycom Everything will come up. 3 T as in Tom, WarriorAcademy.com. Nice, brother. I'm going to go on there, yeah. too. I need to. I want to level things up. I'm doing pretty good with fitness, but I want to level things up. I see your arms, dude. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, Thanks, brother, for coming you. on. You're awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Love you, man.